If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. You can buy our merch at the little thingy at the bottom there. Just click it. Boom. Get a shirt. By the way, if you get a shirt or whatever, uh, send us a picture. We'll feature you on the channel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Up next... Uh, is a, a channel favorite. <laughs> this is Amy Lee Forever. Forever! Oh, yeah, yeah. She's definitely a channel favorite for uh, sure. Sipecore? Sipecore. Chosen Chaos. Mmm, interesting Cypcore. title. Chosen, Chosen Chaos. Chaos. That, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. So am I. I'm like, where is that going to go? Speaking of presuppositions, <laughs> I, already, I already have uh, presuppositions as to what what she means by that. Oh, what, what do you think it is? Well, I think it's uh, probably a relationship song and the person is a chaotic, you know, element in the relationship. You know, typical, mm. typical. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go, guys. Sidecore, Chosen, Chaos. Let's go. Also, shout out to Canada Rocks. And Canada.
I'm looking forward to the road trip, Amy, where we're going to listen to your playlist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure that this is a relationship song. Oh, Chos- I didn't think it was a relationship. Chaos. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you I'm meant not, based off of what you said yeah, before. Remember yeah, because remember I was like, oh, this, this is going to be a relationship No, song. it seems like it's just like choosing chaos in his life. This has got to be a uh, concept record. This would be a fun one to sing with, too. This does not seem to be like a one-off song. This seems to be like a concept record. Am I right, Amy? Is this part of a concept record? I think it's like a it's a whole sci-fi sort of epic thing going on. Um, Probably. But... I I uh, really really enjoyed this song. I really enjoyed the musicianship in the song because again, nothing was really complicated guitar wise to play, but they're a ima- they they reimagined certain like riffs and progressions. They reimagined them and put their own spin on it. Oh okay. And it's really like teaching me as like a student of the of the instrument because you know my time of like being able to you know get a lesson from a you know what I'm saying and just yeah. you know so it's like it's you you're learning from all these great mm. bands and it's like yo it's it's not necessarily how complex the riff is a lot of times your skill gets manifested in how you can reimagine that riff yeah okay. how you can that reimagine sense. that progression yeah have you have you tried this and this at the same time or or deli- you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. it's very interesting to like sit and watch how like philosophically people approach music it's yeah. a crazy thing to watch yeah i was thinking about like you know they, they sit you have that like theories and music theory yeah and i was like man what's that like because i'm sometimes i sit down believe it or not and i think how does vin create those those songs how do you do that because I thought, like, one time I took a guitar and I was, like, taking some lessons and I was like, you know what, I, like, I believed that if I willed something, like, and I really wanted to, I could do it. So I took my guitar and I was like, I'm going to create a song. And it was like, just nothing, really. Yeah. And so I don't understand, like, even though, like, not everything that you play is, like, my style, like, it's still, like, the complexities of it. I'm like, how does this, how does, how do people do that? But then I think... I think, like, because I like to cook and bake and stuff like that. Like, I'm pretty good at it. So I can take a recipe and I can reimagine it, like, another way to make it better. And so I think that, like, I'm using those principles to try to understand what you're doing with the guitar. Like, I imagine a fretboard and it lights up, like, like on Guitar Hero. Like, do you know how it's going to, you know what I mean? And then you, you, like, oh, well, this was here, so you can switch it over here. Yeah. Is it like that? Well, I mean, I guess. I mean, like... It, it, it's to me it's kind of it's like rapping you know like certain sounds rhyme with other sounds you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying and so like if you say cat you know what I'm yeah. saying you know that you could say hat yeah or you could say fat or you could say rat or you could say that you know what I'm saying and then you get into more complex arrangements like orange how do you how do you how do you make a word rhyme with orange you know door hinge you know what I mean? Door hinge. Wow, that's good. That's that's an Eminem thing that he he did like years ago on TV. But like guitar kind of works that way. There's certain sounds that rhyme with other sounds, and then you just kind of, you know, and it's like, oh, I've heard that before. You know, yeah, and you kind of yeah. mix stuff up. But yeah, yeah I mean, but that's a very basic, basic way of me looking at it because that's kind of the level I'm at on on the instrument. But it's not that hard to write metal songs because because of that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you don't really need a lot of riffs to make a metal song good, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, in one, like, there's only one real riff that everybody remembers in that song. Mm-hmm. You know, which, that's been, like, replicated a trillion times. But yeah, this has got to be, um, first of all, I'm very, very surprised by this pick from, from Amy, because... She, she says she doesn't like Cookie Monster, although she has said, like, she's evolved and there's some Cookie Monster that she appreciates. Yeah. But I would not have been like, yeah, this is going to be an Amy. Yeah, but it also has those vocals that go up. Yeah, they were soaring vocals, but, I mean, yeah, but there was a lot of, like... Because back in the day, she used to be like, ah, oh, you know, the Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The she's definitely was, evolved. Was I, ruined, I saw that, too. Yeah, because the... yeah, she didn't like it at all. And, me, and you know, I was not at all a fan of it, really. So I always liked it when she was like... The Cookie Monster Yeah, yeah I'd be like, yeah. You, yeah, you'd let her do, do, the, it, you'd let her do the bad news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, 
No, I, and I completely, I completely understand that. But yeah, I, I was, I was very, very surprised, and it really, it really didn't devolve into a relationship Ooh. song. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> oh, people, uh, pay no attention. Yeah, to but the, the whole thing will go down. Should I go over there and take it right now? Don't pull on it; it's gonna go wall. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I don't like glo goblinish growls. Um, yeah, but like, what? Well, so Amy, answer the question: Was this a concept record? Like, is this a, is this a concept record? Is this like a sci-fi concept record? Four knocks on the door, another day to waste away. Each time that I've chosen chaos as my master, prolong the pain of existence in the void, screaming at my copy. Um. So that right there, like that that to me sounds like the opening of a story, or like a continuation of a story. I feel the thunder of my grinding. It is, yes, all their albums are. Okay, good, excellent. This shows that I'm a genius. <laughs> I was the one that predicted that this was a concept record. No, I predicted that this was a uh, going to be a romance Relations song. song. Um, but then after I saw it, it was a concept record. I feel the thunder of my grinding gears. Okay, so this guy, is a, he's an android, and he talks about like des ter destroying his copy which doesn't make sense to me because if he's an android, wouldn't he be the copy of the human being? So I'm not really sure about that, but I'm going to keep digging into the story. So he says, I feel the thunder of my grinding gears drown in the sea of a thousand tears. So that right there, I was watching, uh, uh, what's that name? Pasalka on that concrete podcast where she was talking about the UAPs or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, the religious connections between UAPs and angels and demons or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And she was talking... Yeah, because she had talked to some Catholic guy, I think, or something? Well, or no? Well, she's a... she's That's her doctorate. Her doctorate's in comparative religion. Oh, oh, she was just... Okay, when but I was listening, was, she was talking about a conversation that she had had with a religious guy. Yeah, but she was, but but it's interest. But but one of the one of the people she was interviewing said that the I think he was like the main rocketeer um, in NASA that got us to the moon. Um, I still believe we went to the moon. It's a little shaky, but I still think we did. But <laughs> like, she was talking about how he said that the future, like the next evolution of the homo sapien is not necessarily going to be like a purely biological evolution like what's been going okay. on for millions of years okay but a hybridization of um biology and technology yeah like so the, that you've got the bionic man type thing the... well yeah right and it goes from like genetic sort of manipulation in the womb mm -hmm. right to which they're already doing which we're already doing to you know, implants, you know, you, you know, the FDA just passed Elon Musk's, uh, you know, whatever thing where he, Neuralink thing where he plants something in your brain and you plant a chip in the other person's brain and you guys can supposedly be able to have nonverbal neurological connections and, and communicate with each other, right? So, like, that's implanted into a person's, you know, brain. So it's like... You know, what I'm are the sure epigenetic... That, yeah, everything's good. I had this nightmare, literally nightmare, that, like, all of a sudden... At, well, it's weird, because it was everybody at the same time it happened to, but if that happened, there would just be chaos and pandemonium. But, but basically, like, in a single moment, all of your thoughts, just everybody could see them and hear them. Like, heard yeah. them out loud. Yeah. And, like, you know, if... And I, and I thought to myself, if you think that the last week of your life, if all of a sudden all your thoughts were broadcasted, that that would be completely fine. You don't you don't have any clue how deep your thoughts go, yeah. or how crazy your thoughts go, because all of us are sinners by you know by nature. We've all whatever. So like, the idea like that to me is like the Neuralink thing. Well, it's interesting because he says, "I feel the thunder of my grinding gears." Right, that's the technological side. Mm -hmm. Drown in the sea of a thousand tears. That's the human side. Yeah. So this thing is like some sort of hybridization of human and machine, which kind of fulfills that guy's prophecy. But he keeps talking about prolong the pain of existence in the void, screaming at my copy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's like there was an original person and then he was a copy of that original person, but then you make copies of the copy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In which okay. case that would make sense. Or if it was he was confused 
and he thinks he's the original and the original is the copy. You see what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't have self-awareness that he's a robot or an android or built or whatever. Like, he doesn't understand, like, to have human emotions but have gears instead of, like, limbs is, Mm -hmm. like, means that you're you're an android. Right. Maybe he doesn't know that. Right. So he thinks that the the, the person that he was copied from is his copy. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, those sci-fi things get loopy sometimes. Like, anytime, like, you see time travel and stuff, like, it's always like, yo, it takes an angle that you... Like, a lot of sci-fi movies do not do time travel the same way. Like, it's very, very interesting. Like, there's this movie called Donnie Darko, mm-hmm. which I don't think we'll ever watch because it's like it's like a cult classic, but it's so disjointed. It's like, by the end of it, you're going to be like, what the hell is this? But oh, like, the way, like that. the way they did time travel was essentially like parallelism, like parallel universes, and you were just hopping, you know. Yeah. Whereas Back to the Future, it was just, you're on one linear line, and you just literally go back to the future. Yeah. So, yeah. like... They did that with Loki, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, sci-fi is so interesting, but like... I see the sort of melding of like man and machine here. I rip off my I rip my face off to understand. That would make sense if he was an android because he would rip off his oh face my and gosh. Then it would expose yeah, the fact that Yeah. Um you're you know, you're uh you know, like yeah. we watch we we've watched shows where I'm not gonna mention, but we've watched shows where like there's androids and then there's humans and then there's characters that you follow that you just assume were human. And then realize, oh my god, they were an android. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, that's kind of a freaky thing. Like, how do you know... Wait, I don't remember what you're talking about. Good. I'm, I'm keeping it general, because I don't want to spoil for anybody. <laughs> but, like, just that concept oh. would be there, right? Uh, the concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. The sure, 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 there. yeah. But, like, that would be, like, a crazy... That'd be a crazy situation to be in. So, like, you know, we were talking about the effects of 9-11 on people's philosophy. Mm. You know, I said, like... Gen, gen uh, millennials and and Gen Zers are not postmodernists yeah. when it yeah. comes to morality. They're very, mm-hmm. you know, very very black and white. You're a fascist. You're a good. Guy. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so it, it, if you think about these major events that like have this giant shift on like millions of people in the populace, like imagine the generation after the generation of Neuralink. So when the jet, let's say four generations from now, Neuralink gets normalized. So the fifth generation would become what philosophies of mind and other things and concepts like rights would those people have when they're the generation after Neuralink has been yeah. normalized? Like, yeah. so for example, if I'm connected to Neuralink, right? That's why I pull, that and pull away from the wall. Let, let, let's say I'm a, a boss or something like that, and I say I'm only going to hire people that, that have Neuralink. Mm hmm. Because you're going to steal time from me and I want to be able to monitor what your thoughts are so you can't steal time from me. It monitors all your thoughts or are you... I'm just okay, saying... Okay. All right, yeah. So what I'm saying is that, uh, sorry, cr- that, creates, that creates a certain... Now you've got two class of people. Mm-hmm. Like we mm-hmm. saw this during COVID mm-hmm. where it was like people started talking about the unvaccinated. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. wait a second here. So like think about it. Like think about all the social pressure that was created that we participated in by like... Um, so I'm not separating myself from that. Orion, go all the way back. You're about to hit that camera. Go back. I don't want you to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. So, like, we we had two classes of people. Yeah. You know, because yep. the media was going the unvaccinated, mm-hmm. right? So, like, imagine like the unmuralinked or whatnot, right? Right? And it's like now yeah. you've got two groups of people. They're both Homo sapiens, but one of them, and and from an epigenetic perspective, like like epigenetics, where like outside situations actually affect your internal DNA. So, think about the Wait, people. What? That's That's epigenetics. Okay, right? All right. Genetics, like, normally we're thought to just be oh, interior. Oh, epigenetics is what, okay, yeah. Right? And so, it's like, okay, what would be the epigenetic ramifications if you had an entire generation of people, right. millions of people have something right. literally in their brain, right? which now changes thought patterns, changes ways of communication, and then you're going to have groups of people who are like, yo, I'm not putting that shit in my head. What's wrong with y'all? Mm-hmm. But all you're going to have a group of people who have this advantage over this other group of people. And then the generation after that is going to be like, who are these people? All they're going to know is that they're second-class citizens. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So like, it yep. creates a lot of these like crazy mind things where it's like, I could you could easily see in six or seven generations after that 
a slave mindset. Like, yeah, that's great. If you don't have a Neuralink, great. We could just make you a slave because we could set everything up so that you can't work, you can't do anything, mm-hmm. you'll be a slave. And now we've got a we've got a permanent slave class, and and then we can feel justified in doing because they chose that right, right? Like it's insane. Right? No, it's completely insane. That's that. So there, there's just and, a lot and of it's things like you, you said. Do that. You know, like the way that you know before we had the internet. You would see stuff on the news, but you it was limited because they could only fit so much on the news. Now it's like you could go on and it's like friggin' there's so much chaos and, and like so much horrible stuff that you can see. So much death, so much graphic death. And like how has that affected us as a society? Because normally mm-hmm. you were just affected or you were only influenced by what was within your circle and what you saw on the news. But this is like it's you could watch hours and hours and hours of just the horrors of what happens in our in our in our world and then how that does affect us like what how have we changed as a people like you know 50 60 years ago the the mindset like i like i said on you know yesterday's shows was people take out a camera and start recording some chaotic situation that's right. happening instead of involving themselves right, right. 60 years ago that was out nobody that was not even a concept to be able to try to grab a viral video so if you saw somebody in trouble and you were there people would get involved because you know it's it, so so i'm saying like with that what would that change there's got there's going to be things that would change that we can't even perceive yeah, like I, I see those things that you listed off but there's going to be other things that that would affect us as a society that we can't even we wouldn't even know yet because we haven't done it on a mass scale well yeah that's that's why i like to me it's like i imagine this guy's scenario to be like the sixth or seventh generation after the normalization of Neuralink. yeah you see what I'm saying? yeah mm-hmm. because it starts there and then it progresses you know to more physical advantages because like the Neuralink thing is a more metaphysical sort of thought for thought which is the metaphysical category not a physical one Mm -hmm. um but then it would be like well why stop there what about this and what if tom brady could get this sort of thing and now he's tom brady till he's 68 you know like so it it just progresses more and more technologically speaking to where it's like how would you know like to me like the big thing about the song was he's taking his face off to understand and then like it really like forces the question what is it to be human like what's distinctly human about you and so like if you had a human android mix is it one of those situations where it's like you would never be a human android mix you would just be a human with like machine like body parts you mm-hmm. see what i'm saying mm-hmm. because to be human is human and then that's it or is, is there some sort of mixture between uh human and android so that if you have a neural link thing or something like that that you're qualitatively a different being like, oh, would it change your ontology? See what I'm saying? Because this is where, like, yeah. the whole Mark of the Beast thing can work, right? Because mm-hmm. it's like, you're taking this thing and it changes you at the ontological level to where, like, you are now bound and beholden to this political system, which essentially would be the Mark of the Beast. Like, And then, like, you could forget what you actually are. Yeah. Because the minute that you allow, I like, I, I would never do it. I would never allow something into my brain to control my mind. First of all, I, I don't think that that's how it works. But I, I would never do something like that, like knowingly walk around and have a chip in my head so that I could communicate like telepathically. That would be crazy to me. Because you think any field in which that sort of interface is happening, there has to be somebody overwatching it. Somebody's in the phone towers. Like Nobody in this day and age truly believes that, they're, that the information on their phone is secure. Like, oh, if yeah. you truly believe that and it's secure... there's also hackers? And that, the, <laughs> the government, head? like... What? It, it, that's no. what I'm saying. Like, if there's a, if there, there's a field that, that that intercepts telephony, there's going to be a field that intercepts all the, the, the exactly. neurology. Like, so it's just crazy to me. It's a crazy idea. Um, solid I was about to band. ask you, because I wasn't sure, because I was... I'm, I'm far too... I'm way too... I'm a controlling person, and I would not want that i would not want that would drive me crazy to know that there was something inside of my head and then i would always wonder like well i don't know how i don't know how it works but like you know like if you're in a bad mental state and so like you you're getting these crazy thoughts like you would wonder like is this me is this something is this that that yeah. thing like what's happening is this you trying to influence you yeah know what I mean? yeah like, what? yeah you would never trust somebody no again. <laughs> especially like cold readers because they can put thoughts into your head like and there's yeah. like 
organizations where you go through courses about how to, you know, do the inception and plant thoughts in people's head and, you know, whatever, whatever. And, like, it can be done. But, like, if you had that, that's a major assist, my boy. Like, that's insane. It's a nine for me. What do you give it? 9.2. Yeah. This, this band, I hope, I hope, uh, I hope there's some more of this band coming down the pike at some point. Because they definitely, like, it's the story that's very interesting to me. Like, there's so many different mm-hmm. ways that these things could go. There's so many different ways that these... That's why I think I like sci-fi, because it's like... It marries, like, fantasy and reality to me. Yeah. I, because yeah. with sci-fi, I'm like, yo, that could happen. Mm-hmm. That could legitimately happen. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, commercial break. Break, break, break. 